it's Lauren from Bodywork by Lauren Drake, and today I'm going to talk about craniosacral therapy. I'm going to talk about cranial work first because it's the first energetic modality that I came to in my life before I was even a body worker. Um, and I'll just start by saying that it's not easy to describe quickly and easily, but I'm going to do my best to keep it short and sweet and really distilled. So cranial work was derived from osteopathy in the early 1900s, and over time it's kind of branched off into a couple of forms. One is called upledger, which is a little more mechanical, and the other is biodynamic, and that is the uh, perspective that I will be speaking from and the form that I have the most experience in. So there are five key principles that I think, I think, are important to hit on when talking about cranial work. And the first is the idea that we're polyrhythmic. So our hearts beat, our lungs expand and contract, and then on a deeper level, all of our cells are expanding and contracting or inhaling and exhaling at a rate that can be tracked. And this is what's called the breath of life. And the breath of life is what is tuned into or oriented towards in this work. The second principle I'm gonna hit on is that life expresses itself as motion. So back in the 1920s, there was this guy named William Sutherland who was an osteopath who was able to determine that the bones of our skull actually move, which at that point, and honestly, still to this day, a lot of people think that the bones of the head are completely fused, which they are fused, but they still have some degree of motility. He actually like strapped leather bands to his head like quail man um, <laughs> and, figured, and did research on himself to figure out that the bones of our skull actually move. And how that is applied to and viewed through cranial work is that, you know, life happens, things happen, we get in car accidents, huge emotional events take place and those events can cause inertia and therefore stagnation in our bodies through which the breath of life is not moving freely and the idea is to restore the movement of the breath of life because it's that movement which provides optimal health third key principle is that health is always present so even if you have aids or cancer or some type of terminal illness you still have health and the idea in cranial work is to orient to and amplify the health present in the system instead of orienting towards disease. And this is why I think cranial work is really cool and um, hopeful and really quite radical compared to other forms of medicine. Fourth key principle is intelligence organized around a midline. So this work harkens back to embryological development, even before then, like moment of conception stuff. There's the phrase, the forces which form us are the forces which sustain us, which I think James Jealous said, but the idea being the forces that are driving embryological development are the same ones that we're calling upon in cranial work to bring about healing. So in that way, it's very deep and very profound and also uh, there's a strong emphasis on the midline. And so with that, I'll end with the fifth key principle, which is a really strong emphasis on wholeness. Every biodynamic cranial training I've ever attended, the teacher has always said, cranial sacral therapy is a horrible name. And it is. Yes, your cranium will likely be held or touched. Yes, your sacrum will likely be held or touched when you go for a session, but it's not just about your cranium and your sacrum. It's your whole body. It's really a whole body therapy. Um, because I mean, because the work harkens back to these embryological states, we're really, we're talking about your whole being not just parts of you and the fragmentation that happens throughout life. The idea is to orient to your whole system as opposed to a fragmented self. Okay, I know that was pretty quick and bite-sized, but I hope it gives you a nice overview of where I'm coming from when I'm talking about cranial work. Um, please reach out if you have any questions, um, and thanks for listening.